everybody is JT Burks, aka Just True. Because when it comes to the gospel, it's just true. There's no ifs, no ands, no buts. But what I want to get into today is you have to examine yourself to see if you want to even be in the Christian faith. Are you even in the faith? Are you following Jesus? Are you following God? Are you following the Holy Spirit? Or are you creating your own type of thing? Your own type of faith? Based on your feelings? Based on your emotions? Where do Christians do that at? It's not about what you want to wear. It's not about what you want to say. It's not about where you want to go and just smack God in the face saying, Well, you gave me this liberty. Thank God for grace. Thank God for mercy. No, God has some parameters. God has some expectations. It is God who called you. You didn't call God. He elected you. Stay in the faith. Pray what God wants you to pray. Say what God wants you to say. Go where God wants you to go. Wear what God wants you to uh, wear. Yeah, God don't want to totally uh, overrule your personality and, and your style and all that type of thing. Uh, stuff, But you have to understand you can't claim to be a blood doing what Crips do. You get killed. And you can't claim to be a Latin king and doing what brown pride say do. You get killed. So how are you going to be a Christian and you doing what the Hindus do? You doing what the Muslims do? How can you be in this faith? You're trying to be a friend of the world. And God already told you a friend of the world is an enemy with me. But you want to say because of his grace God will have me do this. Because of his mercy God. No, no. Quit lying to others and quit lying to yourself. This is a, a, a holy calling. This is a holy vocation. Either you can get with it or kick rocks. Nobody's putting a gun up to your head saying be a Christian. Jesus said if you love me you will keep my commandments. God loves a cheerful giver. If you're not giving your heart to Christianity and you're not cheerful about it, don't give. This is a consecration type walk. You have to lose some things. You have to allow for God to consecrate your life. Prune your life. Let the word of God just totally get rid of bad habits, bad people, bad situations. You're going to have struggles because you're a Christian living in a fallen world that hates God. Anything that stands for God, the world hates it. So you could try to befriend them. You could try to compromise. Guess what? You're going to be the one hurt at the end of the day. Because the Bible gave you a commission, not the world. It gave you instructions, not the world. Or how to go to the world to save some. But not compromising your faith at all. Again, examine yourself. To see if you want to be a Christian. Hey, there's many other things you can be doing. That's what you want to do. Go do it. But quit getting on social media. Misquoting the word. Talk about God don't want you to live like this. And that was the Old Testament. And that, quit lying. The Old Testament is just as relevant, uh, relevant as the New. And I tell people all the time. If you want to think the Old Testament was harder to live. You got it twisted. The New Testament is way harder. You look at a woman. Lust on her. You committed adultery. You lie in your heart. You're a liar. See, it deals with the heart of the New Testament, which is so hard to control. But that's what God examined. The law was based on what mankind came up with, what Moses came up with, based on the heart of the men's heart. That's like the law we have today that we so disagree with. Judges, police officers that don't follow the law themselves. That's what the law means when the Bible says the law was done away with. It's not talking about the Ten Commandments. Because a liar will not enter into the kingdom of God. A killer, an adulterer, none of them will enter into the kingdom of God. Let's get that straight. So quit lying to people that God don't have these expectations. Examine yourself to see if you be of the faith. If you're on social media so preaching against your faith all the time, preaching pretty much in an in a, in a intelligent way against the Bible, talking about uh, King James was this and the Bible misquotes this and, and this was written wrong. If that's your um, 
uh, examination of it, then don't follow it. Go create your own faith. Go create your own Christianity. I'm not ranting. I'm not mad at nobody. But I'm just sick and tired of people wanting to poke fun at my faith. You know how somebody ride or die for being a blood or for a crip or being a Latin king or being whatever they want to be, being a, a terrorist and jihad and all that? You know how they willing to die for their faith? I'm willing to die for my faith. But I don't need a gun. I don't need to be armed with nothing. But what God has equipped me with, that's Genesis to Revelations. And personal revelation that he give us through prayer, through dreams, through vision. Through fellowship. But we have to stop this letting people just say, uh, the book of Ruth is irrelevant and the book of Hebrews don't mean nothing because that was added after this and after. No. Let God be true and every man a lie. But if you can't follow this faith, don't follow it. But examine your heart, your mind, your spirit. To say, God, everything that comes up in my life is not going to be convenient. It's not going to be fun. Everything that you ask of me, God, it may go against my personality. may go against how I was raised. That's the point. Because God's ways is not our ways. His thoughts not our thoughts. But we keep trying to understand him. And misquote stuff. Why? For the favoritism of mankind? Please. Please. You're trying to please some woman. You're trying to please some man. So you're going to misquote some. You're trying to get a favor from somebody. So you're going to misquote the, the, the scriptures. Putting yourself out of place with God. Don't do it no longer. But do as the song said. God, I give myself away. I surrender all. My thoughts. My life. Everything belongs to you, God. I'm just a borrower. My time is limited on this earth, God. Let it be to uh, please you. Because holiness without no man shall see God. I want to see you. Tired of people want to smoke and drink and, and go party and talk about God don't want to take my life. You got to give that stuff up. You want to have sex with whoever ask of you. You got to give that stuff up. You want to go party and want to go clubbing. You got to give that stuff up. You're in the faith. You have to trust God. Paul said it best. He said, okay, now that we get to the end of this race and we die and we find out there ain't no such thing as God, then you're right. We did miss out. But Paul said, I'm not even going to think that way. I'm not even going to consider that. There is a God. And we're all going to stand before him. And the Bible says, don't you add or take away from God's word. It is better that you've never been born. And start giving your own opinion on God's word. That's the one thing that won't change. God says that is two immutable things. He will never change. He will never lie. So why are we saying Genesis to Malachi don't really mean that much no more? You're calling God a liar. You're saying he changed. Stop. Stop. You're a Christian. Act like it. Light and darkness don't mix. Realize it. Compromising is going to have you bust hell wide open. Because God said, I don't want nothing lukewarm. I'd rather you be cold. I'd rather you be hot than lukewarm. I'll spew you out of my mouth. Compromise is a Christian's worst enemy. Realize that. But examine yourself. Either you want God, you want Jesus. You want the Holy Spirit. Either you trust his plan for your life. Don't trust him at all. But examine yourself. To see if you be of the faith. If you want to be in the world. Look around. It's open. It accepts you for a season. But when it step over you. Crucify you. Leave you for dead. Don't say God ain't warn you.